Hi, I'm Rick Bine in the Geography Department at IUPUI, and uh, I want to relate to you uh, some of the traditions of the Sudan in this East African country there over, over here. Khartoum is where I was living, and uh, Sudan is a, a culturally, it's an Arabic culture, but there's a lot of influence from Egypt, so a lot of traditions have moved up the Nile, you said up, which meaning it's down here, it looks good, it's going south. But here was a uh, Khartoum here, which is a separate country. And, uh, but they finished a lot of the Arab traditions of what we call circumcision. And it, it's not just the boys that get circumcised, but uh, girls also. But uh, the, so the ritual is such that the boys are circumcised in quite a ceremony. And, probably around, it ranges in age, in the communities, in the villages, or whatever, but anywhere between five and eight years of age. And uh, people come and, and watch and applaud and whatever. And, and the little old grandmother comes out and, and does, the, does the deed with a uh, sharp knife. And uh, these boys have to stand on a sort of out front of everybody. And uh, she comes along and does her thing there and cuts it off. and. Uh, he, if he cries, uh, he gets uh, shamed by his colleagues, and they let him. They don't let him forget that for long, several years. So he gets kind of. A, so he, he has to really be prepared for this and not to cry, and so because it's going to be pretty painful, and uh, so uh, this is how it's done, and the little grandmother will have a necklace and she'll uh, demonstrate how many grandsons she has by all these little circles hanging on the necklace or around her, her neck here and she can say what you know sometimes she has a name of the kid for each one and I think she keeps them in some order of age or whatever but this is a, one of those traditions in, in that situation there in Sudan I don't know if they practice that in Egypt or not but they do circumcision there and uh, now, the circumcision for women is a very different situation, They're very, very, very uh, uh, strange to us. And uh, this is usually done to girls when they reach uh, puberty. And it's not done with a big show or everybody's watching or anything. It's sort of done in private. And, uh, and the grandmother again comes out, or maybe the mother, and, or an aunt or somebody, uh, will essentially cut off the labia and the clitoris of the girl. And uh, this is done, uh, as a, the reason this is done is to keep her uh, as a virgin, so to speak, keep her from having sexual experiences before marriage. Another thing they did with this is they sewed up the part of the vaginal opening, a process called infibulation. And so uh, she could still menstruate, but she couldn't have sex. And so the idea is when she got married, finally, then she would, uh, her husband would have to break her open in the sex act. But this is a very difficult situation. So uh, if, even for the man to try to do this. So uh, norm what they would do frequently is to uh, send her off to uh, Europe or someplace have her surgically reopened. But while they they're spent their first night at home in the bedroom, uh, he, they were supposed to demonstrate he'd broke her, broken her virginity uh, by sh having a towel with her, the blood on it. But instead of the, having sex like that, they would kill a chicken and put the blood there, and then they would come out and show it to everybody, and they had done their duty. Uh, but this has gotten to be, a, a, I don't know how much, a lot of, there's been a lot of promotion to stop doing this. A lot of people thinking it's terrible to do, but this is still done. And this is a lot of this Arab culture here in Sudan of this uh, female circumcision. I had a student that, uh, he, I, you know, it's something I didn't experience. I didn't get to see any of this, but my, my colleagues there told me a lot, and my students told me a lot about it. And... Uh, I remember one of my students, uh, I'd known him for a while, he says, you coming, uh, I'm getting married tomorrow. I said, what do you mean, it's kind of sudden. He says, yeah, well, uh, how long you known about this? He says, 
oh, since I was six years old. I said, really? Yeah. Well, I used to play with my wife-to-be, and we were having fun and everything. And our dads decided we, we should get married. So back then, that decision was made for me and her. And they, they said, then after we reached puberty, we never saw each other again. And, and all this time, I said, have you seen her since then? No. So when are you going to see her? On her wedding day, tomorrow. And uh, so uh, it's quite a, I, I couldn't imagine that. But that was the, uh, and I said, do you love her? And he says, hell, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen her for so long. But anyway, that was their situation. He had to do the same thing with it. The towel and the killing the chicken and all that, and, but uh, it worked out. But it was probably six months before they could have sex, and so that was a, a real trial there in that situation. So it continues on in a lot of these places. And uh, but uh, again, I I always heard these stories secondhand. It wasn't anything that I witnessed or whatever. But you could talk to uh, medical doctors and. And, and a lot of the people told me about it in, in those communities. So it's pretty prevalent across Africa and different places in here as well. So that's the story. <laughs>